just a field of empty spaces where waves of hunger roll. Shall we set out across this sea of faces? Search of more and more Today we're going to talk about the echo chamber. In recent years this concept has become widespread and well known in, so to speak, relatively narrow circles. And if you know well what it is all about, it may be you who this term could be applied to in the first place. Supposing this expression is new to you, it is even more so. To a particular extent, all people are in the echo chamber. I don't like arguing. I find such an activity energy consuming and meaningless. Controversy can be divided into three categories. The first one is easy to verify empirically. Why argue about how a word is pronounced or how it is written, for instance? You can open a reputable dictionary and check it up. My son, for example, was sure that Nike is pronounced Nike, because that's how mom says, or in general, everyone does like that. It seemed impossible to change his mind. I had to turn to an audio dictionary and explain to him that in words of Greek origin, the letter E at the end of the word is not silent. Catastrophe, apostrophe, and it is the name of the Greek goddess of victory uh, that the brand's name Nike comes from. Sometimes you have to resort to a more thorough study of the issue, but with certain fact-checking skills I don't see a big problem here. Secondly, there are matters which are useless to argue about, because they are an object of faith. For example, the question of existence of God or aliens. I try to avoid the word believe, and to me the words know and feel are much more meaningful and significant. Of course, any knowledge is relative and feelings can be deceptive, yet these are still better than faith. That is nothing or its actual synonym everything. Uh, empty words symbolizing cognitive and uh, psycho-emotional failure. Finally, there are debatable issues that require an exchange of opinions and experience. And uh, a real discussion is not an argument, but a process of collective creativity stimulated by competitive relations, I mean ideological, financial or personal ones. From my teaching experience, I can say that objectively is the most difficult task in international exams and in the school state exam too, is composing so-called essays. A deliberately debatable topic as said, and an honest comparison of 
count arguments is a prerequisite as a result of which you take one or another side into the controversy without detracting from the role of your opponents. And you turn out to be smart and reasonable just because other approaches and opinions do exist. I have always been wary of dissidents, those of them who have devoted their entire lives to the fight against the regime. I am very grateful to them for this, but after the inevitable fall of the regime, they find themselves in a situation where their own lives become meaningless. But having started the dirty technologies of the regime, they seem to be infected with this vile virus and having overthrown tyrants and despots, they themselves become very similar to them. So, an echo chamber. An echo chamber is a hollow enclosure used to produce reverberation. For example, the producers of a television or radio program might wish to produce the oral illusion that a conversation is taking place in a large hall. In music, the use of acoustic echo and reverberation effects dates back many hundreds of years. Medieval and uh, Renaissance sacred music relied heavily on the use of uh, the complex natural reverberation and echoes inside, inside, churches inside churches and, and cathedrals. Cathedral. Nowadays, producing echo and reverberation in this form of echo chamber is simple. A signal from the studio mixing desk, such as a voice or instrument, is fed to a large high-fidelity loudspeaker located at the end of the chamber. One or more microphones are placed along the length of the room and these pick up both the sound from the speaker and its reflections of the walls of the chamber. The farther away from the loudspeaker, the more echo and reverberation the microphones pick up and the louder the re reverberation becomes in relation to the source. The signal from the microphone line is then fed back to the mixing disc where the echo-enhanced sound can be blended with the original dry input. An example of this physical effect can be heard on the 1978 David Bowie song Heroes. It was recorded in the large concert hall in the Hansa Recording Studio in Berlin. Three microphones were placed at intervals along the length of the hall, one very close to Bowie, one halfway down the hall, and the third at the far end of the hall. During the recording, Bowie sang each verse progressively louder than the last one as he increased volume in each verse. Each of the three microphones was opened in turn from closest to farthest. Thus, in the first verse, Bowie's voice sounds close, warm and present. By the end of the song, a large amount of signal from all three microphones was mixed up, giving Bowie's voice a strikingly reverberant sound. Inspired by the sight of Bowie's producer-engineer Tony Visconti embracing his lover by the Berlin Wall, the song tells the story of two lovers, one from East Berlin and one from West Berlin. Bowie's performance of Heroes in 1987 at the German Heistag in West Berlin has been considered as a catalyst to the later fall of the Berlin Wall. Following his death in January 2016, the John Garland thanked Bowie for helping to bring down the wall, adding, you are now among heroes.
In discussions of news media, an echo chamber refers to situations in which beliefs are amplified or reinforced by communication and repetition inside a closed system and insulated from rebuttal. By participating in an echo chamber, people are able to seek out information that reinforces their existing views without encountering opposing views, potentially resulting in an unintended exercise in confirmation bias. Echo chambers may increase social and political polarization and extremism. Another emerging term for this echoing and homogenizing effect within social media communities on the Internet is cultural tribalism. The echo chamber effect occurs online uh, when a harmonious group of people amalgamate and develop tunnel vision. Participants in online discussions may find their opinions constantly echoed back to them, which reinforces their individual belief. Their individual belief systems are what culminate in a confirmation bias regarding a variety of subjects. When an individual wants something to be true, they often will only gather the information that supports their existing beliefs and disregard any statements they find contradictory or speaking negatively upon their beliefs. Individuals who participate in echo chambers often do so because they feel more confident that their opinions will be more readily accepted by others in the echo chamber. What's more, Facebook, Google, Twitter and many other social platforms and online media outlets have established personalized algorithms intended to cater specific information to individuals' online feeds. The mediated spread of information through online networks causes a risk of an algorithmic filter bubble leading to concern regarding how the effect of echo chambers on the Internet promote the division of online interaction. Furthermore, social media platforms are continually changing their algorithmic filtering without making these algorithms public. This makes it difficult to get consistent and comparable results. Epistemologists who study the nature, origin and scope of knowledge, justification and rationality of beliefs, uh, say that the echo chamber is an epistemic construct in which individual voices are actively excluded and discredited. It doesn't suffer from a lack of uh, connectivity. Rather, it depends on manipulation of trust by methodically discrediting all external sources in general. I've already mentioned a so-called filter bubble, a term coined by internet activist Eli Pariser. A filter bubble is a state of intellectual isolation that allegedly can result from personalized searches when a website algorithm selectively guesses what information a user would like to see based on uh, information about the user, such as location, past click behavior and search history. As a result, users become separated from information that disagrees with their viewpoints, effectively isolating them in their own cultural or ideological bubbles. In particular, this breeds homophilia and homophobia, the tendency of individuals to associate and bond with similar others, as in the proverb, birds of a feather flock together. Both echo chambers and filter bubbles relate to the ways individuals are exposed to content devoid of clashing opinions and colloquially might be used interchangeably. However, echo chamber refers to the overall phenomenon by which individuals are exposed only to information uh, from like-minded individuals, while filter bubbles are a result of um, algorithms that choose content based on uh, previous online behavior as with search histories, online shopping activity and 
it is equally important to understand that although similar uh, homophilia or homophobia and echo chambers are not the same either. Some usage examples. How on earth did she win the Z factor? Literally no one liked her on my social media feed. Yeah, well you should try moving away from your echo chamber and listening to people who don't agree with you. Your echo chamber is a trap. You need to be going out of your comfort zone to at least reach the people who are sitting on the fence. I am an absenteeist, and echo chambers protect my self-image by keeping some information out of my field of vision. Such words usually hide elementary cowardice. Users, as a rule, almost always put likes and make reposts to turn the news feed into an echo chamber. The danger of creating an echo chamber is that eventually there are no dissenting voices to highlight possible errors in judgment. His attempts to thwart Ukraine's European future will continue, as will his efforts to hollow out our democracy and replace it with a Kremlin echo chamber. Unless the world imposes such a high price for its imperial ambition that the Russian people refuse to bear it. All in all, an echo chamber is a room designed to create an echo usually uh, as an effect in an audio recording or a film. But it has a modern use which describes a situation where people only hear, see or read opinions they agree with. Just like an echo, they only hear the same thing they just said. Because people choose their friends and follow things they already like, their opinions don't get challenged. In life, we interact with people whose lifestyle, tastes and idea of the world are in tune with ours. It's more comfortable for us to live this way. And we watch about the same movies, listen to the same music, watch the same news channels on television or YouTube, and we are very surprised and indignant when, for example, the election results turn out to be completely different from what they should be, because we are normal people and we are forced to live among abnormal people who are locked up in an echo chamber and they are very comfortable living in this cell because faith and logic are uncomfortable. That is why I try never to argue. It is fun and easy to join a centuries-old echo chamber about how lazy servile and cowardly we have all become. But there is still an opinion that this country is still full of brilliant, productive and innovative people. And not everyone has left or been put to chamber in prison yet. Gonna keep on walking forward.